So we're doing idioms, euphemisms, and cliches. These are my favorite, to be honest. This is, if I could only talk through euphemisms, I'd be very happy about it. But because there's so many, I'm only gonna do a couple of my favorites. And they're significant, they're usually more Southern. I mean, all, obviously all slang and like phrases come from where you're from. But sure. considering the fact that we're from the South, a lot of them are gonna I have- I find them funny that my wife doesn't know what a lot of them- Yes, meant, me too. Especially, especially when I talk to people here and they'll be like, I don't what even- What does that mean? Yeah. yeah. And, and they're unnecessary. Yes. But they're kind of fun. But they're great, yeah. My grandfather always says this one. Yeah. He says, Baskin Robbins has 31 different flavors. Well, he says, that's oh, why Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors. Of course. If you don't like something, and I like something else in yeah. a place, and we can't like decide what we if we like the same thing, he just says, hey, that's why Baskin Robbins has 31 flavors. <laughs> and it's just like, you know, it's a variety. Yeah, of course. <laughs> One time he told me variety is the spice of life. And I'm like, <laughs> he's so amazing. What? Oh, he's yeah, so I know nice. what he means. Yeah. Uh, Madder than a wet hen is one of my favorites. I have never heard that actually. Really? Well, actually I've heard it, but very seldom. And I never, it never really locked in on me what that means. But uh, I'm assuming if chickens get wet, they get mad. Yes. Well, when, when you're not, so hold on, this is a whole thing. Hold on, hold on. The fact that, have you ever realized if you're not choosing to get wet, you don't want to be wet? Yeah, you know, that's pretty true other than like when it's super hot outside and like you get sprayed by something that just kind of feels good and you're not expecting it. But most of the time, I'm almost 100% of the time, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a weird thing. Anyways. Well, you know, when Chuck Norris would jump into the water, he wouldn't get wet. The water would get Chuck Norris. I don't even... You, Do you don't know who Chuck I know Morris is? who he is. Okay, we're coming back next week with Chuck I Morris. I just talk. don't have much of a con like he's not like, not an important Chuck Norris figure in my life. All right, I'm gonna write that down. Anyways, keep it moving. So then we're gonna do bless your heart. So for those of you who are not from the South, if someone says bless your heart, they're being condescending. And although it is a nice and sweet thing to say in general life. It is super, it's almost like... Well, bless your heart. Yes. Tell us you're a little idiot. Yes, it's very well, sarcastic. Well, unless it's an old person saying it to a younger person that's the, really young. Yeah. Like a kid. It's yeah, not, yeah, it's that's not, what I'm saying. It's not as bad then, but if you're still saying that to people that are like 20-something, it's kind of condescending. Yeah. I like it. Because well, it's like so polite. Well, bless your heart. I mean, really, you're saying, well, kiss my grits. <laughs> kiss my grits. That means, yeah, that means like kiss my ass, I think. You think? You don't know. Well, it's a new My that favorite one, hold on. My favorite one that I use most in my actual life. That you use most? That I use most. Okay. Is Dumber Than a Box of Rocks. Yeah. I used this yesterday to describe this dude that I know to these girls I was talking to. And, because that's really what it is. Yeah. You know, like, it's like, it's so self-explanatory. Yeah, you don't even have to really you don't explain have, it. I don't have to explain it. It's so good. Um, hold on. Let me squeeze one in while you're looking. Sure. My dad always says, oh, it's about six, uh, six one way, a half dozen the other. Like when I ask him, hey, which highway would be better to take today since the fairs, get, uh, since the farmer's market's going on in Canton or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he'll be like, oh, it's about six one way, a half dozen the other, which is the same thing. <laughs> Meaning it doesn't matter. It's going to be the same distance or time either way. But he couldn't just say it doesn't matter. It's going to be the same either way. He says, well, it's about six one way, half dozen the other. And like, if I say, hey, how are you doing? He goes, oh, fair to Midland. <laughs> I like, uh, I think he just means I'm doing okay. You know <laughs> what I mean? Why don't I just say I'm doing okay? Yeah. But anyway, go ahead. Um, sweating like a hooker in church. Oh, God. That one's great. That makes, that makes a lot of sense, but, you know. It just means it's hot outside. That's all that means. Is it's hot? Uh, well, yes, it's yeah. hot because you're sweating like but, a hooker in but church. But a hooker is sweating in church because they're convicted to do right. No, but that's not. No, no, no. That's why would a hooker be sweating in church though? Because they're nervous. Yeah, but that's not the point of the saying. Yeah, no. You the point is it. it means it's hot. Yeah. I'm sweating like a hooker in a. I'm sweating like a hooker in church. In church, yeah. That's yeah because you're hot, of course, but. The reason a hooker would be sweating in church. I understand why a hooker would be sweating. I'm just explaining it to the people. Not it everyone is as smart as you are. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. All right. Well, do you have another good one? Um, <laughs> this one's kind of funny. 
Well, uh, they're, okay. Road hard and put away wet. Yeah, I know this one. Is a good one. Yeah, I know this one. <laughs> you know, some, some big bodybuilder dude that I used to know, weightlifters and such, they used to say this about dudes that used to really lift and do stuff, but they looked really old now and they're about like oh, the same age. Oh, yeah. Now, you can say it about a woman in that context as well. Yes. That she looks worn out, right? Yeah. But um, they'd be like, man, that dude was road hard and put away wet. Mm -hmm. I think that's a horse term. It is. Um, and they, they probably look just beat up kind of, you know, just yeah. tired and worn out, you know? It's funny, though. But that is a good one. I like that one. Uh -huh. You have any other ones? A couple sandwiches shy of a picnic. Mm -hmm. That means you're not very smart. Most of my ones are just, you're not What smart. about this one? Mm. One in the hand is better than two in the bush. Have you heard this? Yes, but I'm not 100% sure what the, con what the connotation of The is. connotation of that is that if you have something that is like... Oh, I've got another good one, too. Good to go, mm -hmm. you know? Um, if you have something that's good to go, and, you, and it's a sure thing in your hand, don't go after two other possibilities because there's two of them out there, Right. So the one that you have already, so it's kind of like the grass is greener, is kind better of than the two that are that you don't uh, have that you think you might be able to uh, get. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's kind of a weird one, but anyway. Um, Last one. Okay. All hat, no cattle. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't know that I've heard that. Really? It makes sense to me, because you're saying this dude's just full of it. Yeah. Yeah. All talk. Yeah, I'll talk. Yeah, he ain't got nothing to you show for it. Yes. skins on the wall, uh -huh. which is another, you know, one of those. But, mm -hmm. yeah, those are some good ones, Camille. Kudos to that. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. 